Hello, chess fans. I'm Sam Copeland, and I'm a national master on the content team here at chess.com, and I'm here today to show you an incredible computer chess game. In the 13th season of the Computer Chess Championship, Leela Chess Zero defeated Stockfish with 106 points out of a possible 200. In this game, we see an incredible understanding of space from Leela and the ability with a flood of pawns on the king side to create near Zugzwang in the middle game. The first two moves are actually given by the opening books used for the competition C4 and E6, but from here the engines are thinking for themselves. We see natural moves from both engines for the first few moves, but we do have something that stands out to me. It is queen b6 in this position from Stockfish. Humans have actually liked to play pawn d5 instead. I think we're onto something as this seems a much more natural move than queen to b6, which never seems to fit into any part of a coherent plan from Stockfish. After queen to b6, we see both of the engines uh, kind of develop without creating initial crises in the middle of the board, and eventually Leela makes a bid for an initiative here as it expands with pawn to b4. Now, in this position, you don't have to be a super high-level engine to appreciate that capturing the pawn is bad. C takes b4, destabilizes this knight, and loses central control. Now knight a4, queen a7 to defend the knight. Knight puts pressure on the pin knight on d4, and after you defend it, I'm going to win my pawn back, and I've made significant positional gains. Of course, Stockfish is not going to fall for this, and after pawn to b4, it pulls its queen back to c7, begging the question, why was your queen on b6? In any case, after queen c7, we see pawn to a4 pushing forward on one wing, and then pawn to f4 pushing forward on the other wing. These are the beginnings of what is a clear space gaining strategy from Leela. The neural networks have in general been very, very effective with space gaining plans. After pawn to f4, the knight pulls back to c6. We get a trade here on c5, e5 pushing forward in the middle of the board, bishop e7, king h2. No idea what that's about. If you know, post in the comments. Rook b8, knight f3, we see a trade here. The queen captures back and rook d8. Now, I think it's interesting to pause here for a moment and ask what both engines think they have. I think Leela clearly values its extra space and mobility for its pieces. Presumably, Stockfish seems to be appreciating the positional trumps here, like a half-open d-file, like a pressure on a backwards pawn on d3, like outpost here for the knight. I think something that neural networks have demonstrated repeatedly against the more traditional engines is that more space and control of the position trumps these positional concerns. That's certainly true in this game as Black's very, very um, cramped pieces that lack scope are not able to generate effective counterplay against the weak positional uh, parts of the white position. And meanwhile, the space and control clearly begins uh, to uh, expand and become an overwhelming factor in the game as we see things develop. In any case, after rook d2, we see queen e2, b6, knight into e4, knight b4. What are you going to do about the attack here on d3? I think the answer is the first brilliant move in this game from Leela, bishop to d2. This is a really wonderful idea that really gets the uh, plan of expansion rolling from Leela. We're now going to try and take this knight and push our pawns forward in the middle of the board, and the big question is, why can't you capture here on d3? Well, rook takes d3 is pretty clearly bad. We're going to take on b4 and your rook is loose. That's a beginner error. It's certainly not an error an engine would make. Knight takes d3, though, is more complicated. Why can't you capture here? There's no direct tactical refutation, but after bishop c3, the idea of f5 seems to be just too strong. If you ignore the possibility of pawn to f5 and play a move like bishop b7, when I push forward here, you can have another pawn. You're up two pawns now, good for you. Uh, we're going to push forward with f6. We are going to shatter your control of the dark squares. I will attack f7. And now in this position, it seems very hard to defend as black because I have total control of the dark squares and h4, h5 is a really, really strong idea. 
if you tried to stop pawn to f5 when I played bishop c3 uh, and you played g6, then I can do something different. I can attack your knight and then I can go knight f6 check. If you move over, I'm already ready to open up a tremendous attack by pushing pawn to f5 with ideas of opening amazing attacking lines to your king. Um, and if you take my knight, then I'm going to put the bishop on e5, and that's going to also be a nightmare for black. In fact, this position should just be winning. So all of that to say, after we play this remaneuver here with bishop d2, it's not possible to capture on d3, and since it's not possible, uh, black's strategy has essentially failed. White is now going to be expanding and demonstrating a clear advantage in the game after pawn to d4. Another nice strategy supported by clean tactics. I'm expanding here and you can't take my pawn because I will trap your queen in the middle of the board. I like how the knight controls the queen's escape squares on the C file. Beautiful domination. So after I push forward with pawn D4, I have ideas of D5. I have ideas of F5. What are you going to do? The engine chose bishop to b7 here, rook b to d1, continuing to play with the idea of expansion. Bishop c6 going after a4, which is pretty greedy. Rook d2, bishop takes a4, and from here, I think we're seeing some really sophisticated play that totally neutralizes any attempts from Stockfish for counterplay. We see rook a1 first, rook d to c8, pawn to d5. Notice how the white pawns uh, dominate this bishop in particular, but really, all of the black pieces are very much lacking scope in this position. Rook, um, bishop to b3 attacking c4, rook to c1 defending it, uh, bishop back to a4 here, and rook to b1. I think this move in particular is really brilliant and sophisticated. It passes the move to black, says, what are you going to do? And the engine doesn't seem to have any answer. After pawn to a5 in this position, I think it is very difficult for black to make any progress over on the queen side or really to gain significant scope for the black pieces. That means that white is going to expand with the pawns on the king side in a tremendous way, and it turns out that Stockfish just doesn't have a way to respond to that. So this uh, really, really deep strategy is also supported by some nice tactics. For example, in this position, after uh, Leela launches forward with h4, beginning the strategy, if you play b5, trying to get things rolling on the queen side, then bishop h3, threatening to capture here, is already really, really strong. Um, after h4, we see a sad move, queen e8. Maybe you're going to have to pull back here to hold on against bishop h3. d6, attacking the bishop, bishop d8, and g4. I'm continuing to expand, and you still can't try and push forward over here. If you do this time, then you've shut off your bishop, and you are forked. So the pawns are expanding again. g4, bishop c6, pulling that bishop back, but again, after you pull that bishop back, how are you going to push forward? You'll drop this pawn if you push the A pawn. If you push this, you're just dropping it right away. There still is not a good plan for counterplay. H5, moving up the board. Black plays the sad move, king to H8, but I can't recommend anything much better. If you play B5, now I play pawn to C5, and I'm just establishing huge pawns in the position. So we do see that move, king H8. G5, queen F8, rook F1, preparing pawn to f5, and all four of our center and kingside pawns here are on the fifth rank. Let's just pause and appreciate that beautiful achievement from Leela. Having achieved this, there are now big threats in the position, of course, like capturing on e6 or pushing forward further with the pawns. So there is no choice for Stockfish. You must capture on f5, and after rook takes f5, bishop d7, it actually looks like white has gone too far. Of course, if you can't press home your attack, eventually the king will become a problem. And black is now threatening the rook, thinking about the possibility of putting the bishop on e6, and also attacking the c4 pawn a couple of times. How is white to continue here? Probably the finest move of the game is queen to f1. Boom! A great move. This sacrifices an exchange, 
but it is the critical move to further the attack and keep everything rolling. In the face of all these threats, there's no good way to just sit tight. So black does capture here. Bishop takes f5, queen takes f5, and black needs to capture on c4. You have two choices. Let's look quickly at both of them. Um, in the game, b takes c4 is played. So we're starting here with rook takes c4, rook takes c4, g6. Pushing forward, you have a pin on the f pawn. Uh, so now pawn to b3, just trying to make progress on the queen side before white gets there on the queen side. Pawn forward up to e6. Rook c2, trying to create pressure here and get this pawn further up the board. Queen takes f7. You can't really trade queens because I will have three connected pass pawns very close to queening. Bishop h4, so that this defends right here. Pawn to e7. Uh, queen over to g8. Rook d1, keeping control over this. And now after b2, I love the move here. Queen to f4, a fantastic winning move that traps this bishop and also stops this rook from, go from going forward to c1 to help promote this pawn. It turns out there's no defense uh, here for black. White is winning in this position, and these pawns are just too much. They are stronger than the stopped pawn on b2. So in the game, after queen takes f5, Stockfish with that extra exchange captured on c4, and in addition to its extra exchange, it now has three connected pass pawns that look very dangerous on the queen side, but Leela's position is the stronger one. d7 attacking the rook. The rook moves knight to d6. This creates a huge threat on f7. It also opens up a discovered attack against the rook, so that rook must sacrifice itself. Rook takes d6, e takes d6. Uh, we do see now that white has the exchange back, but still we are down two pawns, and the pawns look dangerous over here but our attack is much the stronger. We're looking to invade on the E file. We also have ideas of Bishop E4 with a tremendous battery and there's no defense for black. Let's see why in some critical lines. If you push forward and attack the rook, then after rook E2, uh, you can capture on D6 with check. You're now up a full three pawns, but after King H3, this is a monster threat. And after Bishop E7 to prevent me getting to E8, simply Queen D5, overwhelms stockfish there's no way to hold against the simple idea of trading queens and invading on e8 in this position amazing stuff so after we capture here it is bishop to b6 that's played and there is only one winning move here it is king h3 i know you guys you guys all saw that one right king h3 easy easy move the thing about king h3 is we are simply getting ready to bring our rook in without allowing this pawn to fall with a check. And we're also making sure that we pick a square that is safe for our king, not a square on the back rank where we could get checked by a promoting pawn. That will be critical in some lines. So in this position, we see a passive and losing defense from Stockfish, but let's ask what happens if you try to push forward and just get these pawns to the other side of the board. Rook e2 here, we are invading too quickly here. b3, rook to e7, c2. And now if you just uh, keep pushing forward here, uh, bishop e4 attacking this square here on h7, g6, queen f6 check, king over, and a quiet move. Bishop to d5, you may have a queen, but I will take f7. I will force checkmate. It is in fact mate in three moves here. No way to defend against the collapse here on f7. Also notice the importance of the opposite uh, opposite colored bishops here to the white attack. That is a new strategic theme that has emerged. If you were to play a little more defensively after the rook came into e7 and stopped trying to push the pawns and played a move like bishop d4, trying to hold the dark squares together, we still break through as white bishop e4, threatening mate. Uh, g6 here. Now we don't have this move that was so great just a moment ago, but we can trade on g6 and win the game. If you take with the f pawn, we get a nice finish. We sack a rook and we mate here on h7. Uh, and if you take uh, with the h pawn over here, simply queen f4, we have too much going against f7. It is not just an f7 pawn winning attack. It is basically a mating attack, but cannot hold against the threats. So 
After king h3, we see what I think is basically resignation from Stockfish. That is the move queen to g8, the saddest move I have seen an engine play in some time. Bishop to d5, attacking f7, rook to f8. I uh, don't think I need to tell you that the strategy of burying all of your important pieces uh, in the corner of the board is not generally a winning strategy. Pawn to g6, we've got a pin here. Pawn to h6, we take. The queen is basically trapped. She has to go over to h7, and we just clamp down with queen to g6. There is no defense for black to the invasion of the rook on the e8 square, but there's no resignation in the computer chess championship. You play to mate, and the mate we play to is this one right here. I hope you've enjoyed this computer game. I think it is fascinating, rich, and instructive, and beautiful. If you like this game, then do click on the playlist on top of the board for more Game of the Day playlists and for more computer chess playlists.